Now in the user's guide, we get to chapter 4, which is the setup section. This section covers everything that's listed under the setup menu in AC Connect School Management. We won't go through every single detail of this menu, but we're just going to cover the basics. On the school configuration page, which is where I'm at now, you can set the costs for your PACES. So we can set to bill for PACES when they're issued, and you can set there the costs that you would like to use. You can set up the address for the school, some inventory options, and you can also set a school logo. So let's do that right now. I can right click on this option and click load and then it lets you select any image on your computer to use as your school logo. So I'll select my logo and on the screen you can see it's loaded my logo here in the program and it shows up at the top of the screen as well. So the logo that you see here will also print out on all of the reports. Moving on, the academic year menu is where you set up the school years for your school. So let me demonstrate how to set up your first school year. To do that, click New, and then type in a name for the school year. So you could say, you know, whatever you want to call it. Typically, you can just say the 2014 year, or I just call it 2014-2015, like that. Then here, set the begin and end date for the school year. And when that saves, like it just did, down at the bottom, select which period type you're going to use, whether it's quarters, trimesters, or semesters. Then each of the periods, like here's the quarters, if you advance, here's quarter two, here's quarter three, and you can set the exact start and end dates for that. Down at the bottom, you see this nice colorful calendar. These colors automatically show which days are in quarter one, two, three, and four. So you can see yellow is my first quarter. And anything that's highlighted in yellow is a valid school day. The program automatically unhighlights any holidays. So you can see Thanksgiving, Thursday and Friday are unhighlighted. So those are not school days. What this means is if your school is going to be on a vacation or take off for some reason, you should remove that day just by clicking on it like I'm doing here to unselect that day. Any days that you have selected, those are the days that you can record attendance, put in homework slips, do goal check, add merits and demerits. Those are all things that can be done on valid school days. So if you're not doing school, you should deselect that so it's not counted in your to total school days for the year. Moving on, roles and permissions let you define the different types of users who will use the program. Basically, administrators have access to everything in the program. Supervisors can manage any of the students assigned to them. Monitors can manage the academics, attendance, goal check, etc. And secretaries can manage the basic family and student records. These are the four default roles that are set up in the program. However, you can add new roles to these, or you could go into a specific role, like the secretary, and edit that role, and specifically give or remove permissions from that user. On the Rooms screen, you can set up your learning centers. This takes just a few minutes and you should create all of your learning centers at your school. To add a learning center, click the New button and type in the name of the learning center. And check the box that says Is a Learning Center. And save that. So you can add all your learning centers. Next on the staff and users screen, you can manage the users that have access to log in to the school management software. By default, there's just one account. That's the admin account. Each staff person at your school should have their own account. I'm going to create a new account for a supervisor. When I do this, it would show me any current persons in the system, but at the bottom I'll click Add a New Person, and we'll just call them John Doe. And you can put in things like cell phone, home phone, so whatever staff person you have in the program would also have their contact information. When you save that, then you can specify the username for that account, if you want it all lowercase.
or if you just want to use first names, whatever you want your usernames to be, specify that here. And then you can specify the password that you want to use for the account. You have to type in the password in both boxes, the password and the verify box have to match. And then you can assign them a role. So if this user was just going to be a secretary, I would give them the secretary role. But I want to set up a supervisor, so I'll give John Doe the supervisor role. And then you can assign them a room. This is where you assign the learning center, and this is quite important. So make sure you assign each of your supervisors the correct learning center. And save. Now that that account has been created, then that John Doe user can log into school management on any of my school computers. The next two menus say subject types and subjects. These are where you can add your own custom subjects to the program. On the subjects menu, anything that's listed in blue, you can see everything right now is highlighted in blue, those are the default ACE subjects. I'll add a new subject here, we'll just call it PE, and select the subject type. Let's see if we have electives. Here we go. And save it. And see, PE is now white. So things that are white are your custom subjects, and the light blue items are the default ACE subjects. You can click on any one of these and edit some settings for them, but you can see the settings for the ACE subjects are limited. You can only select how many credits each subject gets and what the minimum passing score is. On your custom subjects, you can edit anything that's shown on the screen. I won't talk about all these settings, but one key note to remember when creating your own custom subjects is this box that says is pace. So basically a subject that is a pace subject is something that you manage in inventory. If you don't select it as a pace subject, then you don't have to keep track of it in inventory. And that's nice. Say for example you have another curriculum for state history or some other subject and you just want to assign it to your students without managing it in the inventory, all you have to do is uncheck the is pace option. It's still graded and calculated all the same way in all the GPAs and, and high school averages. So the only difference there is pace subjects are managed in inventory and non-pace subjects are not managed in inventory. When you're done just click save. Okay the next option is grade conversions. This is your default grading scale for your school. By default this is a four point grading scale, that's what's recommended to use, but you can edit this. You can change it to a three point grading scale or change whatever minimum and maximum scores you want to on this screen. We actually put them in with the A pluses and A minuses just to demonstrate that you can do that, but if you want to, you can take out the pluses and minuses and just use A's, B's, C's, and, and so on. But this is fully customizable. Next is courses of study. You really should take the time to look these over. These are the default courses of study from ACE for high school, but you should edit this list to match any required subjects that you have at your school. The next option is grade types. This is pretty standard, but if you choose, you can change the names of these subjects. For example, if you want to change senior to say 12th grade or 12th level then you can do that. Standardized tests are where you will set up your achievement tests like the Stanford 10, California achievement tests, ACT, SAT, any of those are set up here and that will be covered in another session. And next desirable traits, relationship types, and note types are all pretty simple but let you edit these basic types of items to use in your program. The last key point for setup, which is not listed here on the setup menu, is to set up a billing plan. To do that, click on billing, and then click on billing plans. A billing plan is basically what you charge for tuition at your school. So when you set this up, you can just put in the amount of tuition that you charge for each grade level, or you can make them all the same. You can set the months you're going to bill, so if you're not going to bill in July and August, you can deselect those. And you can set up some discounts. So first off, let's say for example each time a family has a second child, they get a 10% discount. You can set that up here. 
you can set up a third child or whatever you want to do just type in all those discounts and save that once you have completed all the steps for setup listed in chapter 4 of the user's manual then you can set up the families and students in your program or if you're moving up from the old STMS records keeping software you can run the STMS data import and copy all your records over 